Oh, hey. By the way, I finished the PC. I mentioned in the past that I was an avid gamer as a child. My brother and I used to um, wake up at as early as 5 o'clock in the morning just so we could start playing with our uh, Nintendo. Back then it was called the Family Computer in Southeast Asia where we got it uh, before the Nintendo actually got into the US. As I grew older I started to put aside the, the game controllers and focus on other things because I felt like that's what I should be doing as an adult. So I gave up um, a lot of things such as drawing and um, gaming. Two of the things that I love the most. The core value of who I am today stems from my love for comic books, for drawing, for art, for cars, and gaming. I thought that it's about time I revisit that side of me. And so that's how I started to really brainstorm the idea of building my own, my first gaming PC. And obviously thanks to Daily Setup Tech because I would never have been able to do it on my own. So I managed to do it, but I didn't really stop there. So when I started building my PC, I also started to think about where I was gonna put it. It has to make sense why it's sitting there. I was just reading a book by James Clear and it's called Atomic Habits. And in this book, he talks about environment design. So I felt that if I were to build a PC, that it should at least make sense where it was going to sit in. It kind of just snowballed into this whole setup. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my first real gaming setup. I would probably call this more of a, a grown-up setup, just because I'm not really a big fan of RGB and all that. Pizzazz. I'm going to try to break down this video in sections so that I can better articulate the reasoning behind the design and why it shows the different, you know, aspects of this of the setup itself. To start things off, I obviously needed a desk. I've been fortunate enough over the years to have made great relationships with certain brands. And one of those brands is called Ergon Office, which I absolutely love. They make exceptional desks. My main work desk is actually by them, as you would, uh, you probably have seen in a previous video. So it was kind of like a no-brainer for me to start checking out their webpage and see if there is a desk that would suit my needs, you know, something that would fit perfectly with what I was trying to make. And sure enough, they did. And it's one of their newer products. It's called the Shift Desk. Now, what makes this Shift Desk very unique is that it's made out of this smart, soft touch material. This material is basically highly resistant to heat and scratches, is anti-fingerprint, and also has antimicrobial protection, which I think is kind of appropriate considering what's going on today. I had five matte finishes to choose from, and I chose this black version, which is just very, very sleek and stealthy, and I think matches the PC just perfectly. The dual motors for the legs are capable of carrying up to 300 pounds. And also, they are surprisingly quiet. I loved their Sway Desk, but I'm really, really liking this Shift Desk almost more than the Sway Desk. I don't know if I should say that. I just love how quiet and how tall the, the legs go up to. I feel like I'm six again, you know, trying to peer over the kitchen counter when I was a kid, you know, it, it can go up that high. At least for me. It has advanced anti-collision system and also child lock capabilities. So the safety and the quality and the quietness and the capabilities are obviously there. The one that I chose for the setup is 36 by 72 inches. As I mentioned in the beginning, because I've made so many good relationships in the past, Ergon Office was very, very, very kind and gracious enough to send me this desk and sponsor this video. So this entire gaming setup wouldn't be possible without Ergon Office's help. Thank you. They also provided this optional drawer, which I can put my many, many knickknacks and things. 
and also this cable spine, which honestly, it looks pretty amazing. It keeps everything nice and together and has that very futuristic or modern look and feel that just matches the entire environment. One unique feature of this desk compared to the Sway desk and the other desks that I've tried from other brands is the unique and high quality design of the control module. It has a really nice finish to it and on the top of it has four programmable heights as well as the up and down arrow keys. These buttons are activated by a touch sensor. The fact that the buttons are designed in this way, they're on the top of the control module it's really hard to accidentally activate them when I'm walking by or maybe if I graze it accidentally. So it's never happened to me, which is which is kind of nice. And because it is a very long desk, I'm able to fit a lot of things on it without feeling cramped. This is also actually their most affordable offering in their website. So I definitely highly recommend you check it out. Without going too deep into the details about the PC because I Frankly, I have two other videos talking about it and I don't want to bore you. This PC is a mini ITX um, build. From my understanding, it's basically just a compact design, which looks amazing. So before I started building the PC, I wanted to make the case look nice so that when it sits in a space, it doesn't look awkward or I don't feel like I wanted to hide it. I chose a case by Sliger and this case is called the SM580, which is very popular. And Sliger was very, very kind enough to sponsor me this case. I chose the slate gray color just because I like the very minimal and stealthy look. This case just looks very, very high quality. It actually does feel high quality. I mean, gone are the days of old, big, bulky, and quite frankly, ungainly looking PC cases that I remember from my childhood. And for some reason, they also all had the same color, which is basically um, hearing aid cream. Best way I can describe it. I don't know if you noticed it, but I'm not a very big fan of RGB. So no RGB here except for the cooler itself, which is very discreet enough. This side has an acrylic side so that you can see what's inside. And I have an older GPU that I bought from a friend. Thanks, Tim, because I couldn't find um, the newest one. So this is going to work for now. Basically, I'm using the same monitor that I've been using on my secondary setup. And this is a monitor by BenQ. It's nothing crazy, to be honest, but I think it's really adequate. It's 32 inches, it has a 4K display, and it's just great for casual gaming. I've gamed with it, I've watched movies with it, I've actually worked using, I mean, editing videos with it, I've uh, edited photos with it. It's big enough, especially when you're sitting this close to a monitor, I definitely did not want it to be super big or super wide because I feel like that would be just way too overwhelming. I love the bezel-less design as well as this kind of bronze colored looking chin. One of the great things about this monitor is it's built in speakers. I have two other monitors that I thought would have decent speakers and they definitely don't. This one does. I also like how it has a wheel at the bottom where you can manually change the volume. You don't have to go into like a weird setting or you don't have to you know, try to figure out where the buttons are in the back. It's just right here. It's easier to adjust. It also came with a remote. Now, even though the monitor has decent sound built in, I knew that it was just not going to be enough. So what I did was I chose a bookshelf speaker by Edifier, and this one is the R1850DB with Bluetooth, which is really cool. They really do look amazing. I feel like they fit in the space rather well. It matches the theme. I prefer to have the covers off so I can actually see the speakers inside, but they also look really nice with the covers on. They're very affordable speakers, but they do sound really great. And they have a treble and bass control in the back. It has a maximum output of 70 watts. A sub line out if I wanted to add a sub later on. But honestly, I've been playing music with the speakers and I've been watching movies and playing games. It's really loud and it has enough bass and kick that it's just, it's, it's good enough, especially for a room this small. I can just kick back and relax and adjust the volume with the remote. So those were basically the main components of the setup itself. But now I want to talk about the different accessories that I chose to complete the theme overall. And I'm going to start with the desk pad. It's no secret that I have this love for this company called Grove Made, and they are based out of Portland, Oregon, and they make these amazing desk accessories. I chose the leather one. I obviously chose the black one just because it's going to look nice 
along with the desk. And I'm telling you, the leather on this is super, super soft and just really, really nice to game on, even just to to do some general work on. What I particularly love about this company's desk pads is that they're the only ones that offer desk pads at this size, at least that I can find. They are a little bit more on the premium pricing, but you are getting a premium product. I can promise you that. You see them everywhere, and there's a good reason why. Now, since my PC has all of, of the, uh, the ports in the back of it, I decided to get a PD charger. I wanted the small one, so I chose one from Satechi, and this is their new gallium nitride charger. Now, gallium nitride, is basically a fairly newer or newish technology for chargers and you'll see the chargers that have this are much smaller and are much more efficient which also means faster charging it has two usb-c ports and one usb-a and it's just enough for my my charging needs if i'm sitting on this desk because my desk is very dark i wanted to add some sort of lighting and i didn't want to put a desk lamp this time and so i chose to get a monitor light which basically sits on top of the monitor itself this one is made by base us and they're a very affordable option and no there are a lot of more expensive options out there but this one is just perfect dimmable it is USB powered. It has three color temperatures that you can choose from. It lights up the desk without interfering with the screen. I can really crank it up and make it really, really bright. So when I'm trying to fiddle with something in the dark, it's just much easier. Since the monitor itself is pretty heavy, I think it's around 23 pounds, I had to choose a monitor arm that could carry that weight. And I found one on Amazon made by ER Gear or ER Gear. Not really sure, but their monitor arm has the capacity of carrying up to 26 pounds, is highly adjustable, also very affordable. But I think the unique feature about this one it, is that it has a USB pass-through so that I can connect this or plug the USB to a power source. And this is basically where I plug the monitor light from Base US. Obviously, I can't forget about the mouse and the keyboard. For the mouse, I'm still using the same Logitech MX Master 3, which is good enough for my casual gaming. The Bluetooth connection is fast enough. I don't really feel any latency or lag. And for the keyboard, I'm using a keyboard by Ann Pro. Very simple, compact one in, in this color because it fits the theme of the overall setup. Now, I should also say that I actually have another keyboard that I want to use for this setup. And this keyboard is made by IQ and it's actually sitting on top of the shelves here but I'm still in the process of building it basically finishing it I'm changing the keycaps and I'm also waiting for a custom cable but unfortunately that cable might come later so I decided to not include it in this video for now let's talk about environment design in the beginning I was actually looking for a new paint to paint this wall and then I started talking to my sister and she's like why don't you consider wallpaper so I'm like that's actually a pretty cool option. And we found this very, very nice 3D textured wallpaper, which is part of the Lamborghini Living Collection. And we found this through an Etsy store. It has a very unique and modern design with the pattern, the hexagon patterns. And it also speaks to my love of cars. The fact that it has a logo of a, of a Lamborghini makes me feel like I bought an actual Lamborghini. This is the only Lamborghini that I can afford for now. And to the side of it, because the wall was going to be white, I wanted to add some acoustic panelings just so it can muffle the sound a little bit and maybe eliminate a little bit of the echo. And so I chose a 12 by 12 acoustic panel by Dekiru. I hope I said that right which I found through Amazon. I absolutely love the bezeled edges because they look great. Even if you stack them right next to each other because of the shape, it adds some depth and texture to that wall. And it doesn't compete too much with the textured wallpaper that it's sitting right next to. On the other side of the setup, I have some rustic floating shelves, which I also found on Amazon. It's basically a three tier shelf. They're also very affordable. And they're more decorative because they don't, I, I don't, I wouldn't trust any heavier camera gear on it. Let's just put it that way. So I have my old Sony a6300, compact and small enough to sit in that space, as well as this 458 Speciale that I have here because I love cars and it just suits the space very, very well. And I also have this bigger shelf here for the mechanical keyboard that I'm working on right now. Right above the PC itself, I have a canvas made by Canvo. And they sent me this beautiful canvas with a Porsche Taycan or Taycan. I don't really 
know how to pronounce it to this day. Because it's a canvas, it's thicker. It definitely stands out from the wallpaper itself. It has that warm vibe to it, which adds to the overall characteristic of this gaming setup. A very, very big part of environment design is lighting. And for the lighting, I wanted to use a floor lamp, but I wanted something that was modern and would definitely sit in the space, you know, just like complement it. And so I chose to use this Dyson Light Cycle Morph that I actually had somewhere else in the house that just really didn't fit the space. In this space, it fits perfectly. And what I love about this lamp is that it's highly adjustable. I can control it using my phone. I can change the intensity and the color temperature. I can even match the color of um, the daytime. I particularly love the ambient mode. If I just wanted to have some sort of like mood lighting, I can just do that. And if I'm working on something on the desk, I can angle the arm so that I can light up the desk. Also, it's just perfect for lighting up the wall right behind the setup itself. I also used a very, very old IKEA LED strip that I basically took off from my old desk and I just installed it behind the desk itself to add a little bit more of um, a depth between the desk and the wall. Since I wanted to keep this desk fairly clean, I decided to use a wireless charger for charging my phone. And my choice of charger would be the drop from some products. And this one is just very nice because it just looks really cool when my phone is charging. And when I'm done with it, I can just dock it, you know, and charge it on another side of the office so that it's, it's out of the way. Lastly, surprise, surprise, the chair that I'm using is still the same IKEA chair that I've had for over two years now. I think it looks perfect in the space and the fact that I only have a very small office, I just really didn't want to add another chair here for gaming. And for those who are wondering about this chair, yes, it's very comfortable. And the only caveat that I would say is that it's probably suited for small to medium sized people. Other things that I have on my desk are pretty much just decorative, such as this insulated water bottle made by Lugcraft, which has a car. I don't know if you can tell by now, but I do love cars. And so that's basically my new gaming setup, my first gaming setup, my non-RGB gaming setup. And maybe I hope I've given you some inspiration and maybe some ideas if you wanted to set up your own um, gaming setup. It's more about being inspired, whatever space it is that you're sitting in. Again, all the links for the products and the, the things that I've used here are going to be linked down below. And rest assured, I have more to come. So thank you again for watching. Before I let you go, I would like to please invite you to check out my podcast with Chelsea Horn and it's called the Coffee with Creators Podcast. We basically talk about content creation. We have special guests and um, we actually have one that's coming up pretty soon, which is pretty exciting, but I don't want to spoil it for you guys. Let me just say that he is a very popular and up and coming YouTuber. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to spoil anything, but please do check out our podcast and everything's going to be linked down below. And again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, for all your support, for following me on Instagram, for commenting, sending me all those messages. I really do appreciate that. The things that you loved as a child, maybe you don't have to give them up completely. Maybe it's time to revisit them. I hope you guys are safe. I hope you guys are having fun. I'll catch you guys again on the next video. Thanks for watching. When I was growing up, I was an avid gamer. My brother and I used to wake up at as early as... Plane. Airplane.